anyone else like really stingy with the part of the herbs that they light like I don't like moving down further because I feel wasteful I don't know maybe my my abundance mindset needs to extend to the plants I light as well Hey, it's Marin, and in this video I'm going to be talking about how to pick out your first tarot deck. So we'll talk about just what generally that entails and things that you can look for as you choose your first tarot deck. What the tarot deck even like should be, what it is, you know, we'll, we'll get all into it. So if you're completely new to tarot, a little rundown of generally what tarot is, is it's a collection of the major and minor arcana, which are cards that describe basically the little snapshots of films or stories is what I like to think of it as. Each of these cards carries with it um, a different situational circumstance that when we use that we can dive into and tune into more collective consciousness communicating to us themes that we can use for insight on our horizontal plane, whereas astrology is often a more bird's eye vertical look down to see what's going on. Tarot cards are generally a horizontal like street view version of Google Maps. So there is a pretty widely known superstition of having to be gifted your first tarot deck and it's somewhat BS and I don't say it's flat out BS because there is some truth in that idea. What I mean by that is that when you are getting your first tarot deck, whether it's buying it or getting, or like receiving it, you are being gifted its energy. You are accepting whatever it's offering to you as if it's being gifted to you, whether it literally is or not. Like many things, the idea of being gifted a tarot deck is not something to be taken literally. It's more of like the energetic resonance of what's happening with as you're picking your tarot deck. And even if it is given to you, it might not truly resonate. It's about picking something that manifests as a gift to you, whether you are the one paying for it out of pocket or not. So in picking a tarot deck, you are picking like a confidant or a companion to provide you with insight over the foreseeable future. So there are some things to keep in mind as you are choosing or resonating with a gift, seeing if it resonates with you with your first tarot deck. First off, basically like any relationship, like it's going to be the physical, it's going to be the physical look that catches your eye. So don't be let down by thinking this tarot deck looks so cool or it's so aesthetically pleasing. Like that's your entryway into seeing if you vibe with it or not. So don't feel bad and also don't overemphasize like the sheer surface appearance. Like let that pull you in. So this is the um, original, or not original basically, but this is the very well-known, very traditional Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. Um, and it's also very visually appealing to many because it's very intuitive and eye-catching with all of its um, all of its graphics. Like you can look at these and surmise many of the meanings of the cards based on the clear-cut, very vivid look of what's being shown. Another point is that if you are physically dealing with cards in person, actually touch and feel and see if like their juju matches up with yours. Some decks like literally they might look cool, but like if you pick up the cards and you don't feel any energetic resonance or like relationship that could bounce off of you, like it's just not for you and that's cool. I have plenty of friends that use awesome decks that don't speak to me. Like a good one is like the Wild Unknown deck. I think that's a beautiful deck and it's super trendy and has been for a while now. And like I don't, I, I've tried to use it and like it just does not line up with me. And also different decks communicate differently individually with you. I have several, or actually I only have three decks, so, but I've worked with many, but I, I only own three. I'm like not, I try to, I try to avoid spiritual materialism and getting into like, ooh, let me collect all the decks because like I know for me, I don't want to say I have hoarder tendencies, but like I love the things, so I, I catch myself and I have three and that's good for now. But some decks are very easy to follow with what they're energetically communicating, but they don't as much get into deep shit. Like the Rider Waite Smith deck, just intuitively based on its images, on what it's was created as, it's not gonna tell you like the most provocative, like gnarly subconscious shit necessarily. Or if it does, it's going to tell it in a very PC way. And other decks are much more complex and can be maybe harder to interpret because of the energy that they're pulling up in you, but can get to the root of things easier. Like, for example, my favorite deck ever, which is Falling Apart, it's the Dark Angel, Dark Angels or Anilis Oscuros Tarot deck, which I got this in Houston because I'm from Houston and I grew up there. Um, 
at the Magic Cauldron store when I was actually visiting for like the one time I went home about two years ago. Um, and I didn't even know there was a witchcraft shop there growing up because I didn't know I was a witch growing up, but this is my favorite. Um, it's definitely a very dark, very like gothic vibe, but I haven't seen this anywhere and it's my absolute favorite. Like these cards are just totally beautiful. And if you are buying a deck online, which is totally cool, like that is often what things are heading to, just visualize and tune in energetically with it being as if you were physically handling the deck. It can be just clearly as visceral if you were actually mindfully tuning in to what that deck is displaying. Um, it just takes a bit more focus, obviously, rather than scrolling through Amazon, just catching your eye on like what is the most neon. Also a side tip, which is really cool, is that if you do end up losing cards, which will happen to us all, fingers crossed, not to me, <laughs> buy a separate deck as a filler deck, and you can use this like side set to refill any missing cards in other decks so that this is always your like reservoir so that you're keeping up your machine. It's very important to make sure that all cogs are running very well, even if they look a bit different from that filler set. And my very first tarot deck, which I don't use often because it doesn't resonate as much with me, is the Marseille Tarot. I don't even fully understand the history behind this because I was very instructed in the Rider Waite Smith Tarot deck of the Golden Dawn Magical like correspondences. Um, I mean, intuitively, like I can see what the cards are when I look at them. Actually, I don't even know. No, this is Two of Pentacles. Okay. <laughs> I got this as a gift when I was 16 from my good friend, and... I still use it when I feel called. It's usually for collective readings because I feel a much less personal, much more wide scale feeling with this. Whereas if I'm pulling out the Dark Angels tarot deck, even if it's for a collective reading, I know I'm gonna get a lot of my shit as part of the collective reading. So overall, just to summarize, like it's a lot of just tuning into that card deck's energy, but I think, I think it's important to just restate that it's a relationship you're getting into as a companion for what you're gonna look at as the horizontal viewpoint for situations you are diving into. So let me know your favorite tarot decks down below. I'd be really interested to know just like what what decks you like to use. I'm always up to see new decks. My favorite obviously like I said is the Angeles Escuros Dark Angels tarot deck. Rider Waite Smith is a great place to start if you're like I just want to learn tarot. I don't know what the hell I resonate with. Like just go for this one. It's a great one. So many resources. So with that being said if you found this helpful like subscribe do all the things. Check out my astrology videos down below and also check out my private astrology readings because I would love to read for you. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next video.